Hello, hello, and congrats on getting your new passport photos for free downloaded to your computer. That's great. Uh, my name's Keith, and I'll be taking you through here real quickly um, a quick tutorial on how to remove that background of yours in case you weren't able to take your photo in front of a white wall or screen. Granted, it's not always the that easy to do. We got a lot of things behind us, a lot of times at work or at home, and uh, a lot of times it's quite difficult to do that. So um, there's plenty of software out there to help us, and what we're going to use today is Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. Uh, there were more options out there for us, such as uh, Apple's Aperture and iPhoto, but Apple got rid of both of those, and now we're just left with Photos, which is quite not good. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. And the great thing about this now is that the pricing is fantastic, as I was explaining in the book. Um, with their Creative Cloud suite of all these apps, I mean, you'll probably recognize many of them, um, but especially Photoshop. You can now get them for nine bucks and month pay as you go, um, and it's great. And with one of those is called Lightroom. It's kind of a taken the best part of Photoshop and just left it to digital photo processing and editing instead of instead of the incredibly robust uh, application that Photoshop is now we can just use Lightroom and it's much more nimble uh, for what we need to do here with uh, editing our photos so go ahead uh, click on anything uh, banner that uh, I got in the ebook and go ahead and download that for yourself and uh, we can begin. There's uh, not too many other programs that can do this uh, that have the capability of uh, Photoshop Lightroom uh, as I explained in the in the ebook uh, because one of the things that Lightroom does great is it's a library as you can see here. Uh, you can organize and edit all your photos instead of one by one um, which is incredibly tedious and time consuming and in my opinion not worth it and the interface in a lot of those other applications are is quite frankly poor and hard to use um, so that's why we're using Lightroom today and a lot of the principles are the same and no matter what application you use uh, so it's no problem to learn here um, so as, uh, as you can see when you open it up you got a library where you'd want to start importing your photos and that's another great thing you can see the whole list right here and you also got them down here in this thing called the film strip so wherever you're at in the program, you can quickly select between photos without having to go back to the original library. Okay. Uh, the next tab is the develop tab, and that's where we'll be spending all of our time to develop or, and adjust the photograph, you know, your uh, passport photo. And other tabs, as you can uh, see, are self-explanatory, a map where you can uh, download and see where your photos were taken, a book if you want to print it out as a book, or a slideshow and then we will use print obviously so let's go back to develop and uh yeah uh aperture is quite robust with just a few uh few adjustments you can change very subtly very other aspects of your photo even uh this little guy right here um he wasn't really blue or green that was him originally <laughs> and uh yeah, and it's quite fun. It's just fun to play around with and uh, have some fun and you will uh, get addicted as it's very fun to adjust your photos. Uh, but enough of that. Enough of sea creatures. Let's get on to our passport photos. So go down here to your film strip and or, or, or your library. But since we're already on develop, your develop tab, you have all these things open. Let's go to my buddy's photo that he took at 007 Passport Photos. So this is the quality that you will need. Um, it's downloaded 600 by 600 pixels, which is the minimum required uh, for official passport photos. Any webcam will be fine in addition to any smartphone. So you're on the develop tab. So let's see what we got here. This is obviously the center pane where we'll be working. And on the left is the navigator and history kind of presets um, where you can go uh, through each edit individually of your photo um, so you're not losing your space and on the right is uh, like your I, I call it your adjust your adjustment or photo editing sidebar this is where all uh, the settings are and where you'll be doing most of your work 
but it's not that hard here because we will only be using uh, two at the most tools, which are right here. And the tools you know, are anything from you know, red eye to um, adjustment brush, which we'll be using heavily, and also your spot remover. Um, the, I wish I know you could uh, use spot removal. I wish I had this as a teenager, but uh, we can't adjust our face or anything. Obviously, spot removal can be uh, used well for uh, many blemishes on the face and is good for any type of portrait or wedding photography, but uh, we'll be using the adjustment brush. And we will not be hardly adjusting anything down here, uh, so uh, we can do this really quick. So let's get started. Uh, let's go ahead and blow up this photo as big as we can so we can see it more better. Let's just click this one to one, and there we are. Um, if you got the hand, you can either move it up or down. I like to grab this square right here, move it up or down in the photo, as we see. Now, um, a lot of people just use adjustment brush, but a lot of times that adds uh, a little complication if we start using that. So let's actually use this um, spot removal tool. Um, because a lot of times our background won't be quite this uniform white. You'll have stuff in the background, maybe like a fan or a computer monitor or something. And here's a good example. We got a blue cable run right here and a red, darker color uh, uh, water pipe against this mostly whitish background. And that could prove uh, troublesome. Uh, so we can remove those with this spot removal tool. Um, it won't actually remove them. Um, it will paste over... Well, I'll take another part of the photograph and overlay that part onto the area you just selected. So click your spot removal tool, and here you'll see something come down called brush. And you can either click clone or heal. We'll go with clone. And if you go on your photo, you see it's very tiny. We want to blow up our brush. Just to go to the size slider and just start moving it, and you'll see the size get bigger and smaller. Feather is uh, the transition between... Um, either the part that you selected and then the part that Adobe lays over. So if the feather's really high, then the transition will be nice and gradual. If it's small, it'll be incredibly sharp. So um, let's just go medium. Um, don't have to be really specific, but let's shorten the size of the clone tool down. And let's pick this big red one first. So it's gonna look all white, like we're deleting it, but we're not. We are just tracing that line of this darker area. This will save us problems later. And we're going to let go. And Adobe picked a part of the photograph. It chose this part to overlay over here. Um, and that's fine, except it chose this blue little part, so we'll move it. Um, it's kind of fun if you want to grab it and move it. And, whoa, you can overlay your face over there. It's kind of crazy, uh, but we don't want to do that. So we'll just overlay it, let's say, right here. Yeah, that's good. So kind of hit, hit it. Um, instead of deleting it, it hit it just by overlaying right there. We'll do another one. We'll do this blue one. Let's do uh, two smaller swaths. See where it shows? That's good. I did not mean to make it look like that, I swear to God. And one more. All right, good. Let's zoom in a little bit. And uh, make this a little bit smaller. Oops, not that photo again, please. Brush a little bit smaller. And let's make it a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. We're gonna, I wanna get rid of that blue. Oh, that's way too big. There we go, let's just leave it at that, that. All right, I'll get rid of this blue. Alrighty, that should be good. And because I've done this before, I know this will be a little bit of a problem area. So we'll get rid of this. It's fine. And get rid of that. That's fine. Get rid of that. That's fine. Okay. So let's go ahead and zoom out. A lot of times it's easy to click. Just click one to one um, for your passport photos that you download. This is uh, your one to one ratio. So now we should be done with the clone tool. We made this all background kind of uniform. We'll go to this uh, adjustment brush. So go ahead and click on the adjustment brush. Here you get all of these effects and uh, sliders that you can adjust. 
Um, it should all be set to zero at first. Um, but let's start by going down here to the brush. We have adjustment sizes A and B, and they're just uh, ways to separate it and erase. It's a little eraser bar. So let's go to A. Same thing like the clone tool. It gives you this uh, circle, and it's uh, going to be a brush. The inside circle is actually the brush portion, and the outside is called this feather. Again, it's uh, how quickly or how harsh um, you want Adobe to um, change the original photo to the adjustments that you set right here. So again, uh, a low feather is going to be really quick and abrupt, and a big one is going to be uh, gradual. So we that actually looks pretty good right there. Let's make the feather or the brush a little bit bigger, and uh, when we want that function to work, the uh, when you want Adobe to know that um, what you chose, you want to uh, gradually uh, change. You want this auto mask on, but for right now we're going to click it off, and let's just follow along. So we're going to start painting, and you see there's nothing happening, but that's because we didn't choose anything to change. So let's come up here and do that really quickly. We're going to blow it out. Exposure up, contrast up, and white up. That's it. We're not doing anything special. We're just making as much as we can white. And let's uh, do the whole background. And let's not go over our face because we don't have that auto mask turned on. So right now we're just getting rid of all this stuff. Right here like this. Great little feature of Lightroom. Again, if you guys know Photoshop, it's easy to do in Photoshop as well, but it takes a little bit longer and a higher learning curve. So there we go. Qu quickly got that out of the way. And now we'll go and click Auto Mask On. Um, it won't be as an uh, abrupt adjustment. You'll see like a little spot and specs. So you will have to brush over an area once or twice or three times or four times to get Adobe to recognize that and to uh, start uh, overexposing it. So let's just do this generally, click on mask on. That seems like an okay brush size and we'll begin. Actually, let's just start here down on the t-shirt to show you really easily the, kind of the, the sharpness between the red and the background is quite stark so it should recognize it pretty easily and it does. Just like that. And then shoulders are done. Go in, go in, go in. Get the crook of the neck. There, that's good. See how easy Adobe recognizes that? That's great. Slowly up and down, broad strokes. Takes a little bit, and then as you can see, slowly it adjusts the background according to your presets. Broad strokes, just like that, up and over. Now this actually might be a little bit more difficult for uh, the ladies out there because of uh, your hair. <laughs> um, a lot of times it can uh, obviously be a lot bigger and more wispy than uh, the guys, but if you're not, you can definitely zoom in as much as you want and you can get in between individual hairs. That might be kind of time consuming, but it's definitely possible. But I would suggest actually pulling your hair back and um, showing both your ears um, to make sure that your passport will be compliant. If, you're, if you do your hair and wear a bunch of makeup and earrings and uh, try to look too good, um, that might not actually be a compliant passport photo. So it's uh, better air more better to air more conservatively, blah, 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 and uh, air on the safe side. Plus, it'll be easier to easier to adjust your photo as well. Again, we are adjusting the background of the photo, not the photo itself. We do not want to do that. I know it might be tempting to remove some blemishes, but uh, please do not. That it will be altering your actual uh, state, your photographic state, or altering who you are and that's uh, not the point of the passports. Oops, look what I just did just there. I'm actually glad I did that because I forgot to show you guys uh, Command Shortcut, Command Z. Most of you probably know that. Um, that's undo. That can be in a Word document or anything. Anything cut and paste if you lost a whole uh, three pages of some essay 
Control Z, or excuse me, Command Z will bring it right back. It undoes what you just did. So that's like the back button. And it works here in Adobe Photoshop. Um, keep going. Got a little bit more work to do right here. Up and down, up and down, back and forth. It's getting it. There we go. Let's see if it does it right here. And I'm wearing a hole in my trackpad here. It'll get it. Slowly. Barely. Okay, as you can see, I'm kind of getting my head. That's fine. We have a handy dandy erase tool. Let's do the rest of it over here. All right, looking good, looking great. Um, the good thing about uh, Photoshop Lightroom is um, you have this history on the left hand side. So if you look in this left hand corner, you get to see all our brush strokes. So if something went wrong and you want to start all over, you say screw it, I forgot something. You can definitely uh, definitely do that. So we don't have to worry about messing up at all. So let's get rid of the top there. All right, we're pretty much done except for these spots right here. So let's zoom in a little bit. Let's go three to one. Now let's go two to one. Let's uh, go back over here to this erase button. It's down here on this adjustment brush tool. Remember, it's right next to our A and B and size and feather and flow. Click erase. And that gives you the same kind of uh, tool circles, except there's a minus in the middle. The same principles, the size and the feather and the auto mask. Um, but this basically undoes what you adjusted with the brush or what, what you painted. I'm hesitant to say paint because that's not what you're doing. You're actually adjusting the composition of the photo, um, such as exposure and tint and hue and things like that. You're not taking orange and painting orange. You're adjusting the backgrounds. I'm sure my buddy would like me to make his head smaller, but I'm not going to. All right, it's pretty good right there. It's definitely harder with a, a lighter haired person against a lighter background. Or similarly, a darker haired person against a darker background. But with some patience, it can work. Let's zoom out to one to one. That's pretty darn good right there. Um, let's get rid of... Right, that looks a little suspicious right there. Let's see what that is. Is that anything? Yep, that is. A little bit. All right, even got some wispy hair right there. We'll leave that. That should be fine. And zoom out to one to two. There you go. There's your passport photo. Uh, lickety split. Um, it might take a few times to get this, especially if your background is really, <laughs> uh, uh, has really dark and light features. It's going to take a little bit longer, but with a little bit of uh, thinking and turning your body around with your laptop to get the best uh, photo, um, you should be able to get a good background enough to where you can uh, make it look like this in no time flat. So the next thing we want to do, we'll go ahead, go ahead and click done. And we're done, but we need to print this, right? Uh, so we're going to go up over, up over here to the print icon. But before that, I want to mention uh, that um, you can also crop your photos. You don't, if you size it up correctly with uh, our tool. Well, we don't really have a tool. If you size it up correctly with the guide that we had, um, you should be fine. But we don't have a tool because you have tools on your laptop anyway. Um, there's one in Lightroom and there's others in Preview. And that tool is called the Crop Tool. Um, let's bring up let's bring up Jennifer Lawrence here as an example. Um, I was going to use her for uh, removing wispy hairs, but that would have been a long tutorial uh, because we would have been getting in, in each individual strand. Um, plus, I want I didn't want to use this photo because uh, her both her ears are covering or are, are covered, and that wouldn't be too good for a passport photo. Um, it needs to be uh, your ears need to be showing, and you have to have a natural. Uh, photo posture. Actually, she might have a little bit too much makeup here, but for the sake of demonstration, we'll use this. So we can go into help and just search and crop and learn. And I love this about some uh, modern software. It tells you where to go. You don't have to wonder where crop is. So crop right there already tells us where it is. So we'll go ahead and click it. 
Boom. There we go. There's our tool. We go ahead and resize it. And make sure we follow the guide that we have. With your head taking up about 70% of the photo. Most of the way down. Shoulder showing. Um, this would be okay, but I still I would not submit this for a passport photo. But for the sake of demonstration, that is something that you can do. And if you have another good photo of yourself taken with the past 60 days, you can go ahead and use that and click done. And there is your properly sized, or at least uh, proportioned to your noggin photo. So let's go back over here to the original. There we go. And it's done. So let's go over here and go to print. Um, I already have this pre-selected, but um, print, same kind of thing. We have the center uh, print. Left, we have a preview and setup. Kind of like how we want it to uh, organized on it, on the on the photo, and on the right we have a uh, layout styles where we want the photos actually on the paper. Uh, so first thing, let's go ahead and go to print setup over here, bottom left. Or excuse me, page setup, and there we can click paper size. You will need to print on glossy or matte photo paper. Obviously, you can't print on thick regular yeah, legal pad paper. That won't do. Um, you need to do uh, regular photo paper, and, th and that can be either 5x8 five by, five by or 4x6. By Let's go 5x8. Um, when you do 4x6, you would think that you could get two side-by-side uh, -side since it's 4 inches, but I would not recommend that because you do have to cut it, and it's better to be safe than sorry because you can be disqualified for, you know, even if it's a little bit too small. So best to go with 5x8. Click OK. And come up over here to the right for layout. Uh, click the first one, single image, contact sheet, to make it easy. We don't want prepackaged or custom or nothing. Uh, it's not that fancy. Um, do not click zoom to fill, even though nothing's happening right here since we did not crop our photo from 007 Passport Photos. Do not click that in case you did crop. That will ruin your crop. <laughs> ruin your crop. We come down here and we can go to page grid. Um, that just simply adjusts your rows and columns. Let's just go two by two. Or you can actually go three by two, I guess. Look at that. I don't know why you don't need six passport photos. Oops. Go over here and go two by two. Okay. Now we do need them to be square two by two. If uh, you're doing uh, Mexican passport photos, it's 4.3 centimeters by, or no, 4.3, 4.5 centimeters by 3.5 centimeters. Actually, I should probably switch that 3.5 to 4.5 because that's width versus height. So let's go and make this two by two. Keep square, obviously. We'll keep these square because if you don't, it'll just just, just adjust one side. So keep it square and bring it down to two. 1.99 is plenty. Actually, let's err on the bigger side. Let's go two. Okay. Everything else is fine. This you don't really have to worry about. I always love having that margins and gutters on. Those are nice cut guides. And I would rec recommend if you cut this uh, with a big pair of scissors, make it one cut on each side. Don't take out your pocket knife, um, little scissors, I have this, and make three cuts on each side. Um, I don't care how good you are. I tried this once and I wasn't totally straight. So it's uh, better to go get some kitchen shears and do it that way. Scroll all the way down, print resolution, I would recommend making it as high as you can, set it 240, that's fine. Sharpening, I would go uh, again to good. Um, standard should be fine, high is good as well, It'll just eat more uh, CPU for your printer and ink as well. And media type, glossy or matte, I usually check glossy, should be fine. And then there you go, click print, and you are done. Passport photos, compliant, you did it yourself with a great tool, and it was free. So hope you like the tutorial. Um, if you do not want Lightroom whatsoever and it doesn't suit your needs, you don't like adjusting your photos, you think it's boring, and it's definitely not your thing, please look at the next uh, tutorial. We will use a Preview, and it can do the same thing. Uh, it takes a little bit more work around, but it's still doable, and you won't be able to adjust your photos uh, nearly to the extent or at all uh, like you can with Photoshop or Lightroom and there's no organizing but one by one uh, you can get it done 
with that option too. So anyway, thanks for watching and yeah, have fun on your travels. Bye.